Okay, good morning, students. Now let us start our last lecture of this module. This will be the concluding lecture where you'll be learning about remote replication. In the last class, we have seen uh, various modes of local replication and how we can uh, implement that uh, local replication using various technologies. So we have understood that wherever the source uh, copy or the original copy lies, that is called, that physical disk is called as the source. And uh, where the replica copy lies, that, we, that disk we call it as the target. Sometimes this source and target can be on the uh, same storage array or they can be on different storage arrays also, both in rem uh, local replication as well as remote replication. And we have also seen other uh, methods of uh, local replication and how to preserve database consistency while uh, taking the local replica of the original copy. Right now in today's class, we are going to cover on uh, remote replication. Remote replication is the process to create replicas of information assets at remote sites or locations. In local replication, the re replica copy is generally taken in the same data center or within the same storage array. But the organizations to ensure information availability and business continuity. Now, remote replication helps organizations mitigate the risks associated with regional, regionally driven outages resulting from natural and human-made disasters. So, remote replications helps the organizations to reduce the risks that are linked with this regionally driven outages. Regionally driven outages may be caused either, either due to natural disasters or man-made disasters. In such cases, that entire data center may fail to serve the business operations. In that scenario, the remote replication will help the organizations to reduce the risk associated with the disaster. Now, during disasters, the workload can be moved to a remote site to ensure continuous business operations. Yes, because the current data center can't serve any workloads, the entire workload can be moved to a remote site where the replica copy is available in order to ensure the business continuity. Now, similar to local replicas, remote replicas can also be used for other business operations. As we have seen in the uh, previous class, the source uh, uh, disk, physical disk or source storage where the original copy is stored that can be accessed by production hosts where the application requirements can be served by this source disks through the production host and the target disk can be accessed by business continuity hosts. These business continuity hosts will access the target where the replica copy is available in order to take the backups, in order to take uh, uh, incremental backups or cumulative backups or the entire backups or create the archives. So such kind of extra additional tasks can be done by the BC host accessing the replica copies, whereas the production host can serve the application requirements by accessing the original copy at the source. So this will help in sharing the workload, right? Similar to local replicas, even remote replicas can also be used for other business operations like we have discussed in local replication. Now, what would be the business operation? Uh, what would be other business operations? As I said, it may be taking the backup at frequent intervals or taking the archives at frequent intervals, retaining them for long periods. All these will be other business operations other than application requirements. Okay, so uh, same as in local replicas, even the uh, uh, remote replicas also can serve to take up the workload. Now, what are the modes of remote replication? Remote replication has two types of uh, mechanisms. One is synchronous replication and the other one is asynchronous replication. 
in synchronous replication the uh, replica copy will be taken online whereas in asynchronous replication it will be buffered and the uh, replica copy will be taken let us see that in detail now the two basic modes of re remote replication are synchronous and asynchronous replications now uh, again uh, in local replication what are the modes in remote replication what are the modes and local replication technologies remote replication technologies are very very important questions okay so try to focus on those topics and not once or twice but you have to just go through them repeatedly so that you don't get confused between the technologies that are used under these two mechanisms okay now in synchronous remote replication rights must be committed to the source and remote replica or the target where the replica copy is saved prior to acknowledging right complete to the host so what should happen in remote replication like we have seen in cache you remember in intelligent storage systems we have seen in cache that right will immediately be acknowledged by the cache in some cases and some cases it will wait for the data to be committed to the disk and only then the right will be acknowledged now in synchronous remote replication rights must be committed to the source first source means where the physical disk stores the original copy that is called as the source now rights rights that are sent by the production host or server we generally call them as production host because they serve the application requirements now these production hosts will serve the uh, will access the source and try to write some data to the source disk where the original copy resides now these rights must be committed to the source means saved to the source disk and remote replica prior to acknowledging right complete to the host means this right will be performed say this is the right copy now this right will be committed to the source as well as the target connected to the source where the replica will be taken at frequent intervals either as a point in time copy or a file system snapshot or simply it may have pointers to the original data in the source it may be anything like we have studied in the local replication now this right when attempted by the application first it will be committed to the source and then it will be committed to the target also means it will be saved to the source disk as well as the target disk only then the right acknowledgement means the right operation is complete that received the acknowledgement will be given to the production host okay that is how it ensures that the data is safely written both to source as well as the replica now additional rights on the source can't occur until such pre until each preceding right has been completed and acknowledged now say if the production host wants to uh, write other uh, data means if the production host wants to access the source with ad other write operations in that case first it will ensure that the preceding writes the previous writes has been completed both on the source as well as the target and uh, and acknowledgement is received by the production server only then the next write operation will start now this ensures the data is identical on the source as well as the replica at all the times okay this is an uh, this is the mechanism followed by synchronous replication now further writes are transmitted to the remote site exactly in the order in which they are received at the source now we have seen in the local replication um, uh, concept that database will emit transactions and transactions may have more number of read or write operations now when write operations are within a transaction say there is a transaction t where you have write operation 1 write operation 2 3 and 4 and the sequence is the first write uh, the write operation one occurs first and then 2 3 4 then in the same order they should be copied on the replica also if there is any mismatch in the ordering then the replica copy will become inconsistent with the original database the same thing will be followed here in synchronous replication for the writes are transmitted to the remote site exactly in the same order in which they are received at the source 
therefore right ordering is maintained this is called as right ordering right ordering has to be maintained at the source as well as the remote replica to keep the data consistent enough between the source and the target now if a source site fail uh, uh, if a source site failure occurs means if uh, the data center where this physical disk on which the original copy is stored if the source fa site failure occurs then synchronous re remote replication provides zero or near zero recovery point objective yes immediately the rec the recovery can take place recovery point objective will tell us how much of data can a business afford to lose in case of a failure in such cases you can see that the uh, in case of source site failure here in remote replication synchronous remote replication provides a zero or no, near zero recovery point objective means it ensures that no data is lost at any case okay because the replica is taken synchronously only when the replica is also updated along with the source only then the next write happens that is how it ensures synchronized data between the source and the target so that no data will be lost by businesses which indicates that recovery point objective rpo is zero or near zero for this remote replication mechanisms got it now however application response time is increased with synchronous remote replication because writes must be committed on both the source and the target before sending the right complete acknowledgement to the host yeah that is okay compromisable drawback because it is providing near to zero or entirely zero recovery point objective means it is providing at most data protection to any business in this case the application response time though it is increased it can be compromised why the response time increases why the application response time increases when an application wants to write a Uh, write the data to the source as well as the uh, when the application wants to write the data to the source immediately the data will be written to the target also only then the acknowledgement is sent to the application saying that the write is safely committed the write operation is complete now in this case it has to wait till the data is written to the target also for the acknowledgement that will increase the response time but okay because it is providing good data protection now the degree of impact on response time depends primarily on the distance between the sites the bandwidth and quality of service of the network connectivity infrastructure so what is the bandwidth that is allotted to take this remote replication and what is the distance between the source site source data center and the target data center and the quality of service terms that have been agreed upon between the client and the service provider infrastructure st uh, storage infrastructure provider so these will affect the uh, these will affect the response time with which an operation right operation or a read operation has to be completed okay so these are the important parameters bandwidth the quality of service and distance between the sites will affect the response time when the uh, remote replication have to be taken now this is how a remote uh, synchronous replication looks like initially the host or the application or the production host we can call it with any such names but do not get confused between the application host and the business continuity host business continuity host mainly concentrates on taking the backup and taking the archives but business but application host will mainly focus on the application requirements okay now this host when the host writes data to the source the data from the source is replicated to the target also at a remote site now the target acknowledges back to the source that the data is committed to the target then the same acknowledgement uh, then uh, the source also will acknowledge the write complete to the host only then the next write operation will happen with the source and the target so this ensures that whatever is updated on the source same data same updation happens at the source uh, sorry same updation happens at the target also before the next write is done before the next uh, updation is done to the source 
this is how the uh, replica copy is maintained intact and consistent with the source copy this is called as synchronous replication but because the data has to go to source as well as the target then receive the acknowledgement from the target as well as the source the response time will be increased now what about bandwidth requirements for synchronous replication in this case this graph will explain you in a very clear manner how the bandwidth requirement changes in this case uh, time is plotted on the x axis and write megabytes if the uh, amount of write amount of bytes that are sent to be written onto the disk uh, that is source as well as the target if it keeps increasing what happens how would it affect the workload and the bandwidth so in this case if you take this as the required bandwidth maximum required bandwidth then as you go on increasing the write workloads it will also increase the time and as you go on in, uh, requiring more and more bandwidth the response time also increases you can see how the response time is increasing towards this uh, direction so that increase that indicates that as you as the write operations increase while taking the remote replication as the write operations increase then bandwidth utilization also increases so as the bandwidth utilization increases the typical write workload with the application increases this will make the further write operations keep waiting uh, until the write, uh, write acknowledgments from the previous writes are received so this will keep on increasing the time of write operations to wait before it is committed to the source and the target okay so this graph indicates that as the required bandwidth increases as it reaches the maximum the demand for bandwidth uh, reaches the maximum and the write workload also increases then the response time keeps on increasing this is what we can interpret from this graph now how re uh, asynchronous replication is taken in asynchronous remote replication a write is committed to the source and immediately acknowledged to the host before it is written to the target that is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous replication in synchronous replication the write happens on the source as well as the target only then the acknowledgement is received by the application host but in this case in asynchronous replication a write is committed to the source and immediately after that the acknowledgement is received by the host in this mode the data is buffered at the source and transmitted to the remote site later so any updations that happens to the source will be accumulated will be collected in a buffer temporarily and once it reaches some maximum extent say 64 kilobytes or 126 uh, bytes up to that extent once the uh, updations are accumulated then the data will be committed to the target at a time the data will be flushed to the target at a time okay that is the mechanism followed in asynchronous replication asynchronous replication eliminates the impact to the application's response time because the writes are acknowledged immediately to the source host so application response time will be reduced because the application will immediately receive the acknowledgement as soon as the original as soon as the write operation or the write content is committed to the source it need not wait to be written to the target so application response time seems to be reducing because the acknowledgement is received immediately but what is the disadvantage can anyone tell guria you are there sunil asta tell me what would be the disadvantage in this case when you understood synchronous uh, replication you should be able to appreciate asynchronous replication against it at the same time you should also be able to note the drawbacks right in asynchronous replication though the application response time is reduced by immediately acknowledging the host by the source still 
there is a danger of data loss because the while uh, the data is accumulated at the source and the source data center fails the new updations will be not available with the remote replica copy that is one disadvantage okay let us see this enables deployment of asynchronous replication over distances ranging from several hundred to several thousand kilometers between the primary and remote sites that because of because of not requiring to acknowledge the host after writing the original copy to the replica but immediately the replica uh, the acknowledgement can be given by the source itself you can deploy the replica data center at any uh, distance because the source need not wait to transfer the original copy to the remote site get the acknowledgement back from the target and then send the acknowledgement to the host that duration between the source to target acknowledgement need not be uh, maintained in asynchronous replication so you can deploy the target data center at any distance that is the flexibility provided by asynchronous replication this enables deployment of asynchronous replication over distances ranging from several hundred to several thousand kilometers between primary and the remote sites primary means where the source uh, copy is stored and the remote site is where the replica copy is stored so the distance can be uh, can be maximum extent possible because the acknowledgement given to the host is directly from the source and it need not be taken from the target as in case of synchronous replication now in asynchronous replication data at the remote site will be behind the source this is the drawback i spoke about in the asynchronous replication mechanism data at the remote site will be behind the source by at least size of the buffer how beautifully it is explained see the uh, whenever the source receives the updations it will have a buffer now any updations are buffered at this location and at a time they will be flushed to the target site where the remote replica is being taken now when there is a source failure at most it can lose up to data that is the capacity of the buffer at least the size of the buffer okay so in asynchronous replication data at the remote site will be behind the source by at least size of the buffer therefore asynchronous remote replica replication provides a finite or limited or non zero recovery point objective disaster recovery solution so you will not ensure continuous replica being taken some data may be lost in case of the source data center's failure so it is a finite rpo means it is limited uh, uh, rpo means recovery point objective it doesn't ensure as that zero recovery point objective can be promised it says that it is non zero means some data have to be lost by the business in case of this asynchronous replication now rpo depends on the size of the buffer the available network bandwidth and the right workload to the source so the recovery point objective we are talking about depends on all these parameters size of the buffer how much is the size of the buffer that much data may be lost because when the source uh, the data center fails the buffer also fails along with it so any updations taken on the buffer will be completely lost before it is written to the target in this asynchronous replication so rpo uh, so asynchronous replication implementation can take advantage of locality of reference means repeated writes to the same location so uh, one alternative for this buffer failure one alternative in this asynchronous replication is it can take advantage of locality of reference what happens in this locality of reference repeated writes can be made to the same location so that the previous writes will be available though the uh, new writes fails at any point of time 
that is called as locality of reference but again this will be a right penalty because it is trying to write many times so for it, with every technology there are drawbacks and there are advantages so you need to maintain a trade off between both of them and see how good the uh, technologies will serve your application requirements based on that you need to decide whether to uh, adopt a synchronous replication for your organization or an asynchronous replication mm -hmm. always it is application dependent and how the application demands what type of io performance the application demands what type of data protection the application demands based on that you can take the uh, you can uh, take up the technology that have to be adopted right from beginning we have been uh, uh, asserting on this point right the application requirements the application io requirements the application data protection requirements will decide which type of architecture which type of technology which type of backup which type of replica you are going to decide for your application now if the same location is written multiple times in the buffer prior to transmission to the remote site only the final version of the data is transmitted say if the same location is written multiple times means the write operation happens multiple times in the same location in the buffer prior to the transmission to remote site then only the final version of the data will be transmitted obviously because the previous versions will be replaced now this feature conserves the link bandwidth this feature will try to uh, save on the link or network bandwidth now in both synchronous and asynchronous modes of replication only writes to the source are replicated reads are still served from the source itself so whenever change happens to the copies uh, the data stored on source it is through writes only so only the write operations will be replicated the read operations can still be served by the source targets need not be touched to perform the read operations okay so only when some updations happens only when some write ha happens then the data will be uh, replicated on the remote site as well now this is how a re uh, asynchronous replication takes place the host writes the data here to the source and the write is immediately acknowledged to the host it is very easy to present in your exam also if you understand the concept well the host first writes the data to the source and immediately the source will acknowledge the host indicating that the application response time is lesser in asynchronous replication but after acknowledging the uh, host after the acknowledgement is received by the host from the source then the data is transmitted to the target at a remote site later means it will have a buffer here where the new updations are accumulated and once the buffer is full it will be flushed to the target site at a later point of time now the target will acknowledge back to the source that the buffered data is safely returned to the target okay this happens in asynchronous replication and as i said there is a danger of losing this buffered data in case of source uh, data centers failure so what is the uh, um, how do we understand about the bandwidth requirement for asynchronous replication in this case we can see that the there is average bandwidth requirement because the data will be accumulated and at a time it will be flushed to the target in such cases the requirement of the bandwidth will be average but uh, uh, when we take the typical write workload as the workload increases in this case also the buffer will be full frequently and the buffer have to be flushed frequently which again increases the bandwidth utilization so as the bandwidth utilization increases as the average bandwidth utilization increases and the workloads increases at the same time the time the response time also increases okay along with increase in the write operations so this happens in asynchronous replication also but in asynchronous replication the required bandwidth can be maintained at an average now it need not be utilized to the maximum extent whenever immediate synchronous replication have to be taken bandwidth utilization will be at the maximum but when the data can be buffered before taking the replica copy then the bandwidth utilization comes down to average that is indicated in this picture 
Now let us see the last topic of this chapter that is remote replication technologies. What are the technologies that are available to implement this remote replication process? Remote replication of data can be handled by the host or storage arrays. Same thing we have seen in local replication also. In local replication, we have host-based local replication and uh, storage array-based local replication and also network-based local replication. Same technologies will uh, uh, be implemented here also. Remote, uh, they apply here also, means to take the local replication, it can be handled either by the host or it can be handled by the storage arrays. Remote replication of data can be handled by the host or the storage arrays and other options include specialized network based appliances to replicate the data remotely over the LAN either by using the local area network or by using the storage area networks where fiber channels will be used even to send the data that have to be replicated. Now let us see first about host-based remote replication. In host-based remote replication, it uses the host resources to perform and manage the replication operation. Same thing happens with the remote uh, local replication also. When the local and remote replications happen on the host side, it will use all the it will utilize maximum extent of host resources, which will overburden the host while serving the application requirement. Right, that is the disadvantage of host-based replication, but also there are some advantages. Let us see how it works. Now, host-based remote replication uses the host resources to perform and manage the replication operation. There are two basic approaches to host-based remote replication. What are they? By using a logical volume manager, we can take the remote replica or by taking the database replication. Database replication via log shipping. It is called as log shipping, where the log file contains the updations which can be shipped to the remote site where the replica copy can also be updated. That is called as database replication by using a log shipping method. Now in LVM based uh, remote replication, LVM means logical volume based remote replication where logical volume manager is a software that will divide the physical volumes that will group the physical volumes into logical volumes. I have explained this in yesterday's class also, but those who were absent can take advantage of this. So the physical volumes are grouped into logical volumes and these logical volumes will form the logical volume groups which will create a virtualization layer that will be presented to the client to store the data. Okay, this entire task is be, uh, will be performed by logical volume manager, a software responsible to uh, enable or facilitate this task. So LVM based remote replication is performed and managed at the volume group level. Now, writes to the source volumes are transmitted to the remote host by the LVM itself. So whenever a write happens to the source disk or source volumes, in this case, instead of calling the source disk and target disk, we are calling them as source volume and target volume. Because in the previous case, we tried to understand the original copy saved on a physical disk and the replica is also saved on a physical disk. So where the original copy is stored, we call it as source. Where the replica copy is uh, saved, we call it as target disk. But in this case, we are not referring to the storage space as a disk, but we are referring to it at the virtual layer level. Means we call it as the logical volume. Okay, so where the source copy is saved, it is called as source volume and where the target means the replica copy is saved, we call it as uh, target volume. Okay, so do not get confused between the terms when we are talking about virtualization instead of referring to the disks, we refer to the volumes. Okay, so writes to the source volumes are transmitted to the remote host by the logical volume manager. Now the logical volume manager on the remote host receives the rights and commits them to the remote volume group. Did you observe here? We are calling here as remote volume group or the target volume group. So the rights will be committed to the remote volume group also once they are returned to the source volumes. 
Now, prior to the start of replication process, identical volume groups, logical volumes, and file systems are created at the source and the target sites also. So, uh, before starting the replication uh, process, the, uh, the volume groups, the logical volumes, and the file systems that are available on the source volume, same pattern has to be created on the target volume also. So that whenever a change happens to the logical uh, so source volume, same change can be replicated on the uh, target volume also. Now, initial synchronization of data between source and replica is performed. After that, after creating this uh, pattern of uh, storage, then initial synchronization of data between the source and the replica will be performed. Now, one method to perform initial synchronization is to back up the source and restore the data to the remote replica. So a source backup will be taken and then restore the data. The data will be restored to the remote replica. Now, alternatively, it can be performed by replicating over the IP network also. Sometimes it may be transferred. That backup that is taken at the source can be transferred to the remote replica or restored to the remote replica by using the IP network also, by transferring it over internet protocol. Now, until the completion of the initial synchronization, production work on the source volumes is typically halted. It is paused. Production work on the source volumes will be halted for some amount of time until the initial synchronization of the source volumes to the target volumes are completed. Now, after the initial synchronization, production work can be started on the source volumes, means any right operations, any right requests can be done on the source and replication of data can be performed over an existing standard IP network. So initially, it has to be a direct connection to perform the initial synchronization. After that, any changes that happens to the source can be updated on the remote replica also by using the IP network. Now, this is how LVM-based remote replication happens. In this case, the production host will have some data on the logical volumes, logical volume one, two, three, and four, which are having physical volumes underlying them, which is not presented to the client. The client is presented only with the logical volumes. And you also know from the initial chapters that physical volumes are converted to logical volumes, then the virtualization is provided to the host to optimize the storage allocation. Okay, so in this case, the logical volumes, once the initial synchronization is completed between the production host and the remote host, then whatever changes happens to the logical volumes, they will be transferred to the remote host over the IP network. Now, LVM-based remote replication supports both synchronous as well as asynchronous modes of replication. So if a failure occurs at the remote, uh, sorry, if a failure occurs at the source site, Applications can be restarted on the remote uh, host directly using the data on the remote re replicas. So whenever a source data center fails or whenever a source site where the original copy resides fails, in that case, applications can be restarted against the remote host. Means the application will can immediately start accessing the remote replicas in order to ensure the business continuity. Now, LVM-based remote replication is independent of the storage arrays and therefore supports replication between heterogeneous storage arrays. So sometimes the remote replication will be storage array dependent. That we'll see in the next topic. But when the LVM-based remote replication is independent of storage arrays, then what is the advantage? It supports replication between heterogeneous, different kinds of storage arrays. The storage medium can be different. Some storage arrays may use tape libraries. Some storage arrays may use disk, uh, physical disks. Okay, So such kind of heterogeneous environment can be supported while taking this LVM-based remote replication. Now, most operating systems are shipped with LVMs, so additional licenses and specialized hardware are not typically required. So when these uh, LVM specialized operating systems are available for us, no additional licenses or specialized, uh, specialized hardware are required to take the remote replication. Okay, it is uh, operating system dependent. 
it is uh, accomplished this remote replication task is accomplished by operating systems itself now the remote replication process adds overhead on the host cpus as i said it utilizes the host resources it will become an overhead this replication task will become an overhead for the host cpus cpu resources on the source host are shared between replica tasks and applications we know that hosts are generally uh, uh, host will generally be serving the application requirements now if you are overwhelming it with the application uh, uh, replica tasks also replication activities also then the cpu resources has to be shared by the source by the host between this application uh, request and the replication activity request that will actually overburden the application server now this might cause performance degradation on the host side to the applications running on the host yes this will degrade the performance this will degrade the io performance this will uh, degrade uh, increase the response time because the application server or the host have to focus on the replication activities also while say, serving the application requirements so it will increase the response time and degrade the performance because the remote host is also involved in the replication process it must be continuously up and available even the replica uh, rep, remote host means where the replica copy is being saved even that also should be up and running because you are synchronously saving the data uh, so that the replica will be consistent with the uh, original copy now what about host based log shifting Uh, one mechanism is to use lvm based remote replication sometimes the database can be shipped by using log uh, by using the log files so that is called as host based log shipping mechanism in this case the database replication via log shipping is a host based replication technology supported by most databases when the database replica has to be taken remember database will not be on a single source volume but database can span across source volumes or source disks now in that case taking the replica will be a challenge and that to at the remote site will be even more challenging in this case database replication via log shipping is one solution in which it is a host based replication technology supported by the uh, supported by most databases now transactions to the source database are captured in the logs any transactions that are performed against the source database are captured in the log files which are periodically transmitted by the source host to the remote host something like buffering mechanism only but in this case the transactions which include various read write operations will be logged temporarily in a file will be recorded temporarily in a file called as log and that log will be shipped to the remote site in order to reflect those changes to make the remote replica to be consistent with the source uh, uh, copy okay this is called as host based log shipping very easy to understand concepts but if you get confused while presenting them you will um, um, actually give wrong answers in the exam so not a single reading just before the exam but go through the topics two to three times then it will be easy for you to remember and present them so the remote host receives the logs and applies them to the remote database so that the changes will be reflected on the replica copy also on the remote database also now this is how a host based log shipping works in this case the production host will have all the uh, data on the uh, distributed on the source volumes these are all called as source volumes where the original database is saved now any changes made to these source volumes will be recorded on another disk called as log now this disk will be shipped over the ip network to the remote host at frequent intervals of time so that this log can be replayed on the target volumes so that the change will reflect on the target database also at frequent intervals okay this is called as host based log shipping
Now, prior to starting production work and replication of log files, all relevant components of the source databases are replicated to the remote site. So before starting any production work, before uh, activating a replication uh, task, all relevant components of the source database first have to be replicated as it is on the remote site also. Only then any changes happening to the source volumes can be shipped as a log file to the target volumes. Now this is done while the source database is shut down. So initial synchronization, initial copying of the source volume means source database to the target database initially while performing the task, initial synchronization task the source database should be shut down from access by the application or the host server. Now, after this step, the production work is started on the source database. Now, it can be made available to the application. Now, the remote database is started in a standby mode and can receive the log shipping whenever the uh, log file is ready to be shipped by the host. Until then, it will be in a standby mode in order to save some power utilization also. Okay, so the remote database will be kept in a standby mode until unless it will get the alert that the host will ship the log file in order to update it at the target end. Now, typically in standby mode, the database is not available for transactions. Now, in this case, the remote database will not be available for any transaction when it is running in a standby mode. Now there is another kind of replication that is storage array based remote replication. In the previous case, we have seen host based remote replication because, uh, where the host will be responsible to perform the replication activities, where resource utilization of the source will be an overhead uh, while it is also serving the application requirements. But when we transfer this replication task to the storage array, then the host will be relieved of this replication activities and can improve its performance by only keeping itself dedicated to serve the application requirements. Now, what happens in storage array based remote replication? In storage array based remote replication, the array operating environment and resource resources perform the may uh, perform and uh, sorry and resources perform perform and manage data replication so in storage array based replication the entire storage array and its operating system will be responsible to perform the replication task as well as the resource utilization while performing the replication task now this relieves the burden on the host CPUs, as I said, which can be better used for applications running on the host to serve that application requirements. Now a source and its replica device reside on different storage arrays. So when you take the source replica, uh, uh, sorry, when you take the source uh, volume and the replica volume or the source disk and the replica disk both will reside on different storage arrays because you're talking about remote replication. But when you take storage array based local replication, in that case, source as well as the target disks, you can reside in the same storage array within the same storage array. But in this case, the, uh, the source and its replica device have to compulsorily reside on different storage arrays because you are creating a remote replica copy, not a local replica copy. Now, data can be transmitted. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we should just say remote replica or local replica. We can't say replica copy because replica itself is the copy. So I correct myself um, regarding that. So uh, let us see the next point. Data can be transmitted from the source storage array to the target storage array over a shared or a dedicated network. So the network over which the source storage, the, the source copy is transmitted to the target storage array, that network can be either shared or it can be a dedicated network. It depends if the la if large volumes of data have to be replicated, then it can be a dedicated network. Or if it is limited uh, amount of data that is being replicated, then it can be a shared network. Now replication between arrays 
may be performed in synchronous, asynchronous, or disk buffered modes. So when the replication between storage arrays is taking place, it can be through a synchronous mechanism, or it can be through a synchronous mechanism, or it can be a disk buffered mode. Let us see what are there. Now in synchronous replication mode, in array-based synchronous. Ma'am, time up. What is the time? Nine thirty-one time. Which is your next hour? It's a machine learning class, I think, right? Okay, so uh, tomorrow also we have a class. I'll continue this uh, synchronous replication mode in tomorrow's class. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll continue with this. Uh, what's the name? Machine learning class, ma'am. Email class. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's what. So I'll continue this topic in tomorrow's class. We uh, would not be taking more than uh, 20 to 30 minutes. I'll complete this chapter in tomorrow's class. What about the students? All are present? Srinivas. And who else? Ramya. Okay. 